Everyone, hi. Bruce Muffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada, coming back with another musical breakdown. Tonight, we got a lot of requests for this guy. His name is Frank Ocean, and we're going to do kind of a hybrid of two songs. Uh, the main song we're going to be doing is Siegfried, and also there's another song that he did, which is really impressive, called Bad Religion. So we're kind of going to morph both of them together. Before we begin, I want to give you guys an upcoming event list so you know what's going on. We did our training last week on Fathers One. Went very, very well. People got a lot of insight and information out of it. We're going to do Fathers Two. That's going to be on June 24th at 5:30. Please tune in. You know the process by now. Just sign up. You see the sign-up sheets. It's very much. It's very easy to do. It's in the box. No problem. When we take Bitcoin, yes, we do. All kinds of currency. At the same time, next week and the week after, we're going to have two live streams. You guys know the topics, you guys enjoy them, give you insight again. We want people to have comments because we're going to start doing a contest as well. Best comments, people that are most active will have access to free trainings. We're going to give those things out based on the best comments. And finally, June 24th, Fathers 2, because these, to me this topic is so, so, so important. For those of you that are going to be watching the J. Cole Let Go of My Hand video, huge issues there about fathers and being the relationship you have with a father so it's every almost every song that I do a breakdown there's an element of where are the fathers how can I be a better father that's what Jay Cole was talking about in his song and in a lot of ways that's what Frank Ocean is kind of going with his thinking and mindset you know I need someone to look up to who do, who am I how do I define myself so let's get started so you guys got the ideas Next two weeks, live stream, end of the month, live training, Fathers 2, June 24th, 5.30 p.m. Here we go. All right. We haven't done this before, but it, I just think it just bared relevance because I think Siegfried needed this from Bad Religion to kind of go from 1 to 2. He put out this song where he's really expressing himself, and he's in a taxi cab, and he's talking to the driver, and, he, you know, it's confession time. And the comment I like, because, you know, as you guys know, I just break down the comments that are relevant to me clinically. I don't go through the whole song. I just go through the parts that are clinically, you know, expressive. And it goes like this. Bobo, you need prayer. I guess it couldn't hurt me. If it brings me to my knees, it's a bad religion. Oh, this unrequited love, to me, it's nothing but a one-man cult. He's expressing his feelings. And defining if religion is giving him what he needs to make it work. And this kind of led into the next song to me, Siegfried, in its own way. Can it give me answers? Many times with religion, the way I took this was kind of different than I saw from other approaches was, can it give me the answers I don't get from my home? I don't care what religion it is, you know, can I get some soulless by getting closer to God, whatever my version of God is? Because I can't get it from my family, so to speak. I can't get it from the world around me. Maybe religion is the answer. Can religion pick up the slack that I'm feeling the emptiness in my heart? Can it accept me for who I am because my family and my friends don't? I'm seen as an oddball and a freak and an outsider. But can religion give me what I want? And that's why he was saying bad religion. You know, if it doesn't give me what I need, I don't, I don't really follow it. Bad religion. Makes sense. Okay. That's from the song Orange. Now I want to go to the song I'm going to be breaking down tonight in more detail, which is Siegfried. To me, again, with this album, and I've seen this with other musicians, whenever I see this, the hand over the eyes, and you can't see the eyes, red flag, red flag, red flag. It means something to me. Why do you got to put your hand over your, your eyes and not to see your true self who you are? From the expression, the eyes are the window to the soul. So there's all, whenever I see the hand over the eyes, I'm always like, hmm, person's hiding something to a certain degree. He's a genius, Frank Ocean. I mean, his voice is melodic, and I could listen to it all day long, and I have been. Just He has a great musical upbringing, uh, R&B, fusion. He has a huge jazz influence. His voice can hit different octaves. It's a pleasure to listen to him. Very, very, very creative singer and a great arranger as well. And it, it's a music, musical fusion that, draw, that draws on R&B, pop, jazz, and soul. And he, 
does it all together very, very, very well. He goes like this, I can't relate to my peers, I'd rather live outside. Yeah, I can't be who I want to be. I'm not myself. I've got to live outside of my framework of how I define who I am as a person. How I am to define myself of my own sexuality. Who am I attracted to? Then he goes, maybe, you know, I'd rather chip my pride than lose my mind out there. Yeah, because, you know, to think differently and to want differently. You know, chip my pride. I, I'm not going to be who I want to be. Maybe I'm a fool. Maybe I should move and settle two kids in a swimming pool. Think differently and to want differently? Oh, not good. Let me go ahead and be like everyone else, follow the herd and crowd. Yeah, maybe I'm a fool, move and settle, two kids in a swimming pool. Am I going to be like everybody else? That's a question you got to ask yourself growing up. Am I going to be like everybody else or am I going to follow my own path? Hey, not easy, very hard. At times very lonely, at times very difficult. But ultimately, that's how you're going to define yourself when you come to the end of your days. Was I true to myself? Did I just, you know, lockstep, follow the, the herd, follow the crowd, think like everybody else, talk like everybody else, follow what everyone else says? I'm a sheep, not a wolf, I'm a sheep. That's an important thing as you guys who tend to be young who watch our channel need to think about. What do you want to be in life? Not saying crazy, I get it. But how do you want to define yourself as you become an adult? Or if you're a young adult already? I'm not brave. I'm not brave. Okay. There's a lot of interpretations of why he used the word Siegfried. And I'm going to take a couple of minutes to kind of break this down. There were two poets during World War I. One of them was named Siegfried Sasson. Other one was named Wilfred Owen. Okay. They met in a place called Craig Lockhart, which was a convalescent center for soldiers that had been wounded in World War I during combat. Both of them were British officers that had been hurt badly in separate issues. And they went there to recover, and Owen was suffering for what now we understand as shell shock, PTSD. He was seen as a figure of worship to Owen and perhaps even an object of his affection. Obviously during that time in England and most other countries to be openly homosexual would lead to imprisonment and arrest. So you had to be very careful how you had your relationships and how you spent time with other people and how you wrote about them. Sasson was sent back to England after suffering an injury, a supposed, and it was never really clear about this, friendly fire, a shot by his own people basically. and. This drove Owen to return to the front. The question is why? Why would he go back to the front? He had been grievously wounded himself. This is likely in order to raise further awareness, something that Sasson could obviously not manage while recovering from his injury, because Owen was obsessed with the idea of ensuring that as a poet, he was the both of great poets on the front lines, he could expose the truth of war to those at home and fight what they call other propagandist poets that tended to make war exciting and glamorous and fun and dangerous and cool. Sasson was an inspiration to Owen, someone he views as a kindred spirit and a beacon in a world otherwise filled with those who turned a blind eye to the sufferance of war. Okay. Wilfred Owen had a huge attraction, and he said this in many of his letters and his thoughts, about Siegfried Sasson. His war poetry and the horrors of trenches and gas warfare were much influenced by his mentor, Sasson, Siegfried, and stood in contrast to the public perception of war at the time and the patriotic verse. He wrote some amazing poetry. I hope you guys read and tell me what you think about it. One of them is called Anthem for Doomed Youth very powerful you know, message about the horrors of war and how it affects you. Owen went to France to fight. He was in England, he went to France, and he, he became an, a young officer, a young lieutenant. Here's what his horrors went through, what he went through as a soldier. He fell into a shell hole and suffered a concussion. He was caught in the blast of a trench mortar shell and laid unconscious on an embankment lying on the remains of one of his fellow officers. 
He was diagnosed, of course, as suffering from PTSD, and he was sent to Craig Lockhart War Hospital in Edinburgh, which is in Scotland, for treatment. It was while recuper recuperating at Craig Lockhart that he met fellow poet Siegfried Sassoon and encountered that was to, to transform Owen's life. Now here's where it gets interesting. Owen didn't have to go back to active duty in terms of active duty combat. They had him on light duty given the injuries that he suffered and what else happened to his mind. But he went back to active service in 1918. He could have stayed at home. Why did he go back? Well, Sasson, his muse and his idol, had been sent back to England after being shot in the head. And he was put on sick leave for the remainder of the war. His time was over. Owen saw it as his duty to add his voice to that of Sasson, that the horrific realities of war might continue to be told. Sasson was violently opposed to Owen going back. He threatened to stab him in the leg if he tried it. Aware of this, Owen did not tell Sasson that he had gone back until he was already in France. In the end of August 18, he went back to the front line, imitating Sasson's example about being a leader, about being tough, about being macho, about being strong, about not letting people leave, you know, left behind, doing your duty, God, king, and country. Guess what happened? He was killed. He was he was involved in a terror he was involved in a serious battle got a medal got a promotion and a week before the war ended he was killed that was it after the armistice a week later he would have still been alive Sasson waited in vain for word from Owen only be told of his death several months later the loss grieved Sasson greatly and he was never able to accept that disappearance philosophically they were close he looked up to him. I want to go back now to the song, I'm not brave, I'm not brave. You know, we go through life often feeling you have to prove yourself. In certain occupations, you got to be macho, you got to be manly. Oh, you're, you're a soldier, you're a police officer, you're a fireman, you're a professional athlete, college athlete, high school athlete. God forbid, God forbid, you might not be a ladies' man. Don't be a man's man. Can't have that, because those guys, you know, they're not tough. And you do things that often you don't really have to do, but you want to prove yourself. And often it leads to your demise. That led that to Wilfred Owen. Never the same again. He went back. He didn't have to go back. His mind was shattered, and to a certain extent his body was. But he wanted to prove to his muse, the guy he idol worshipped, because he said to his mother, I'm not fit to be around this guy. And he admired Sasson for various other reasons. Sasson was cool. He had really interesting friends. He came from wealth. Being in a circle made you feel good about yourself. But it ended with his death. Because so often we have to prove a point. Why? Because society tells us this. Or Hollywood tells us this. Or your friends tell you this. It's so stupid. Clinically, I've had so many experiences where people have said to me, I had to act this way because of my skin color. I had to act this way because of my ethnicity, because of where I grew up, because of how I was raised. And I'm like, that is so stupid to me. Was my head filled with dumb, dumb stuff when I was growing up? Of course, every kid is. But hopefully as you get old, you start to realize, I don't have to think like everybody else around me. I don't have to do what like everybody else around me. I don't have to follow the stereotypes of everyone around me. Oh, I hate this race because of what this person said. What do they really know about the other race, other religion, other ethnicity? I can't be with this kind of woman because it's not allowed, it's inappropriate. Who decided these stupid rules? But you get caught up in that nonsense and you never grow. I got to go into this profession. I can't go here. Can't eat this. Can't try this. Can't do that. Can't have this. Because we get so caught up in our stagnant roles. And in a way, I think Owen wanted to prove himself to Sasson that he was, quote, quote, a real man, which ended tragically with his early death. So get past that. Then it goes down in verse 2, I'd rather go to jail. I tried hell. It's a loop. What would I recommend I do? What would you recommend I do? And the other side of a loop is a loop. I 
get where he's coming from. It's a loop. Circles going around and around. It's not going anywhere. Albert Einstein, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I'll hide who I am. I'll hide who I really want to be because, you know, everyone says so. Going to destroy my career, destroy who I am. You know, one day we hope we get to the point in this life where you're not looked at and like by your skin color, by your ethnicity, by your sexuality. Who cares? I don't care. Why would I care? I got some other problems of my own. But what about someone else's lifestyle is even stupider than, than anyone else. But the definition of insanity is being on that loop and going nowhere. Same thing over and over again. We spend so much time being what we were not rather than being who we should be. Can't get off the loop. Then it goes like this. In verse 3, speaking of nirvana, it was there. Rare as the feathers on my dash from a phoenix. That's what it's like to truly connect with somebody. That's what true love is. That you click like a key, you know, key in a keyhole. Boom. You know, you put two pieces of wood together and they match perfectly. Or you put two bricks together like it just clicks in. Love is, is insane and it's also beautiful. It's pain and pleasure wrapped up. To truly have someone that you connect with it's just a glorious and roller coaster like feeling that puts you up and down, up and down. But that's when you know you're in love, not you're like you're in lust or I'm in love with the person for right now. When you truly love somebody and you want to be around them, it's like sparklers and bottle rockets going off. And it's, it's painful and it's exhilarating. Your heart goes pitter patter. Then he goes to, you know, verse 4. Less morose and more present. Dwell on my gifts for a second, a moment. It's kind of like more positive. Be in the moment. Don't give in to the darkness and dwell on my gifts. What is it that makes you special? If you can't find someone that you want to be with, find somebody else. Don't, don't have to be abused, domestic violence, settle for what I call the capital L. You don't need that. Guy's a loser. She's a jerk. Run. You only have one life. Make it positive. Focus on your gifts. Be in the present. Be in the present. Be in the present. And then in the outro, I do anything for you. He says it beautifully. Uh, in the dark, I do anything for you. Very pensive as he repeats this line. That's what true love is. I do anything for you. Anything. Okay, you surrender yourself completely. Like I said, being in love is both terrifying and amazing at the same time. i do anything for you. And he's talking about that when he's really felt love, when he really felt who he was, everything changed for him. And that's what that means. Now, okay, we get it. Frank, more than realistic, realistically, is bisexual. He's made, he's made mention of this. It's not anything new. In 2016, I was interested in reading about this from Wikipedia. Following the Orlando nightclub shooting that killed 49 people, Ocean published an essay expressing his sadness and frustration. He mentioned his first experience with homophobia and transphobia was when he was with his dad and he was six years old. Father, I'm sorry. And later, how many people pass on their hateful ideas to next generations and thousands of people down suicidal paths? In 2017, unfortunately, his father sued him from defamation, wanted $14.5 million. On October 17, 2017, he and his parents took the stand. The judge ruled in favor of Ocean, saying his father had not provided sufficient evidence of defamation. Okay. Clearly, there are problems in the relationship. Get it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to bag on the father. I'm not doing that. That's easy out. Until you're in that situation as a parent, you, I, you can't talk. I, I always like when people say, well, I would have done this and I would have done that. Until you're in it, you know what? You don't know. You think you know, but you don't know. So I'm not here to judge the father and bash him or like, you know, good, you know, blah, blah. It's not the point. The problem is the relationship is not where it should be. That's the main point. And the thing I'm trying to teach when I discuss the fathers, fathers too, you know, coming up the end of the month and why this is, the training is so important and why it's so relevant 
is you got to learn about yourself as a father and how you relate to your kids. Because if you're not the one doing the teaching, the streets will. And they're much, much, much harsher than a parent's love, particularly a father's love. Not knocking moms again, blah, blah, blah. You need a father in your life. You don't have to, you know, you want to have an open relationship and to feel accepted. That's the point. And when a kid tells you something, like, listen, I got kids. When they tell me something positive, I'm happy for them. When they tell me something stupid or I notice something stupid, I say something. Self-destructive. You're not doing things right. What are you doing with your life? One of the hardest things for a parent is being able to accept that your kids are going to have their own views and their and take on things. They're not going to be a carbon copy of you. It's unrealistic. And if you think that's going to happen, you're fooling yourself. It's having the confidence to let them learn how to express themselves and just give them different perspectives on things. But they're going to have their own views. I, this is my political view. This is my political view. This is what kind of job I want. This is what kind of career you wanted me to have. You got to accept that. And you've got to understand that both of these are good and bad, and the decision is out of your control. But you want to be part of the process. That's the issue. Last night, just to give an example, I was home and my kids had gone out, both of them, neither one drives, and they're coming back. I said, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? And they gave me the times, you know, even though I was tired, I got a long day, I had a long day today. I said, I'm going to stay up till they get home. And I did. I woke up tired today. But they came and each one came, talked to me, how did it go, where you went, blah, 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 everything cool. Great. They went to bed. I went to sleep. That's it. You know, for one night, everyone is safe in my house. That I'm the father. I'm the captain of the ship. It's the same thing being in, uh, in charge of employees. Whether you want to, well, a lot of people don't care, but whether you want to admit it or not, you're in charge of these people. You're like, in a way, their father. And how you respond to them when they're having issues, and believe me, they always will. I don't care what kind of supervisory position you ever have, what kind of business. You got to be there. You got to be in the moment. You can't be drifting. You got to make decisions. You got to make, you know, you got to do things. And sometimes I got to always remind myself, like, take a break. Think about the bigger picture. What about your spidey sense? Was it tingling? It's telling you something about how to handle a situation. And sometimes I make mistakes, but I reflect on them. What could I have done better next time? What could I do differently next time? Like just with my kids, with my job, with my spouse, with my career, everything that I do, even these videos, I go home and I drive home. I'm like, what could I have done better? What could I have done better? That's the point. That's what I got in this song. He's a great artist. I mean, again, what am I to say? Am I argue? Of course he's great. Guy's fantastic. Got a beautiful voice. And I hope he finds happiness in himself so he can move forward and continue to make great music and not get wrapped up in all that anger and self-destructive behavior because that's the craziest thing of all. With this, I want to just clarify one more time. If you made it this far, and I hope you did, the 24th at 530, Fathers 2 coming at you. For those of you that are going to be fathers, for those of you that are already fathers, for those of you who want to think about becoming a father, what are things you need to learn so that you make the right choices? That's why these trainings are so relevant. And just from the music, just from the breakdowns, it's a circle, but it's a loop of positivity when you get the right perspective and the right training. With that, Bruce Muffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada. Thanks for watching.